Communities have a trophic structure. The prefix troph means nat nutritional habits or food. So now we're going to look at how energy in the form of food connects the organisms together inside a community into food chains. Trophic structure is the pattern of feeding relationships. One way to view this is a food chain. The food chain shows the transfer of food. Each step in the food chain moves up a trophic level. At the very bottom of the food chain are the producers. These are plants and algae that can do the process of photosynthesis. They don't need to eat food. Instead, they use light to make their own food. Another term for producers is autotrophs. Auto means self, and troph, again, is food. So on the right, we can see two different food chains. The terrestrial, or land producer, is the flowering plant, and the aquatic producer is plankton in the water. Consumers are animals that have to eat other organisms to get food. There are several trophic levels of consumers. The first level is the primary consumers. They eat the producers, meaning that the primary consumers only eat plants and are thus herbivores. The terrestrial primary consumer is the grasshopper who eats the flower. And the aquatic primary consumer is the zooplankton who eat the phytoplankton. The next trophic level is called secondary consumers. The secondary consumers eat the primary consumers. These are carnivores or omnivores since they are eating animals. The terrestrial example is a mouse who eats that grasshopper. And then the aquatic example is the fish who eat the zooplankton. Tertiary consumers eat secondary consumers, such as the snake eating the mouse. And the highest trophic level is the quaternary consumers who eat the tertiary consumers. This can be seen with the orca that eats the tuna. The animals in the highest trophic levels are usually larger and less numerous. This means that they are bigger, like the hawk is much larger than the mouse, and there are usually fewer of them. There are typically a lot more mice than there are hawks. There are typically not more than four levels of consumers in any food chain. Another group that is not shown in the food chain is the animals that eat dead organisms. Scavengers, like the vulture, eat dead carcasses that they find. Earthworms are called detritivores. They eat organic matter that is in the soil. And decomposers, such as the mushroom that is growing on the fallen log, actually break down the plant matter, the log, and they return it to the soil where plants can then use it as producers. Food chains don't really provide the most accurate picture of a real community. Many organisms have overlapping niches and so use some of the same food, re food resources. For example, we have the desert kangaroo rat and the Harris antelope squirrel, which are both primary consumers that eat the prickly pear cactus. This means that they are competitors. Notice that some of the animals fit into more than one trophic level. The elf owl is a secondary consumer because it eats the grasshopper, but it is also a tertiary consumer because it eats the praying mantis, who is a secondary consumer. Food webs can help ecologists study the impacts that species will have if they go extinct. What would happen if the western diamondback snake went extinct? Well, the snake would no longer be there and it would no longer eat the desert kangaroo rat or the Harris's antelope squirrel. This means that these rodents would probably increase because their main predator, the western diamondback, is gone. With there's more of these rodents, that means that they will be eating more of the prickly pear cactus. They might even eat all of the prickly pear cactus and that caused that to go extinct. It is important to be able to make predictions about what could happen in a community if certain species are disturbed. And we use those predictions to inform government decisions about what species we should protect.